All right, so good morning, everybody. <laughs> I am here today to do some fun stuff with collage. I am going to work on some postcard art. I'm going to show you how to start from scratch. And sometimes people get a little flustered um, when they get overwhelmed with too many choices, you know, a blank page in front of you, you don't know what you're doing. So I wanted to um, just kind of go over some things, show you some different approaches, because there's a couple of different ways that you can approach starting a collage. So that is what we are going to do. Um, sometimes you will have questions and it's, it's going to be hard for me to be reading through all the comments all the time. So I thought that if you have a question, we should stick some kind of symbol or emoji or something in front of it so that I can see it's a question. Maybe a happy face. Put a happy face. Well, lots of people put happy faces. I don't know. Let's put some kind of a emoji um, at the beginning before your, before your question. And then that way, when I glance over at the chat, I'm able to see what questions you have. Okay. All right. So let me switch my C views. What? Here's my tabletop. Move this out of the way. I have a few things in front of me. So today we I'm talking about postcards and creating postcards so I have a cutout here and this is just a piece of cardboard and I am thinking about the first thing I'm thinking about is substrate when you go into a shop and you are say you're on vacation somewhere and you go into a shop you're looking at postcards if you pick one up you know you kind of have in your mind how thick it should be right the thickness of a postcard so i always try and imagine that when i pick up something else here is some file folder these also have a really nice thickness to them right they're still a little bit bendable, but they're not stiff. And if you send a postcard through the mail system, it needs to bend. It needs to. If you want it, if you want to send it with an ordinary postage stamp, it needs to bend. You can send something that is not bendable, but it cannot go through their, their machines that process mail and therefore it will need a separate stamp and it will cost more. So it, it's no big deal. You know, if you want to send something stiff, sure, fine. You just need to pay a little bit more for it. But I'm always looking for things that are just slightly, slightly bendable. Okay. Um, good places to get this kind of material are food packaging. So cereal boxes, pasta boxes, those are the types of materials that I like. So this is what I have. The other things I have are scissors, um, a straight edge ruler for tearing. If I want to put something down and then tear, I, I have that glue stick. It's a very ordinary glue stick. I just got this from the Office Depot or whatever. Um, it's called Scholastic, but it's, you know, whatever, whatever glue, really, I, I'm not fussy about glue, whatever you have on hand and whatever works for you. All right, so now different kinds of ways to start a collage. Um, option number one is you have papers and let me grab some papers out of my box. Okay. 
So you can just start grabbing papers and layering things down. And start getting a bunch of different things and then kind of get a feeling for what works. Right. Here I have something in this kind of yellow color so I could start looking for pieces that match that possibly, right? So my goal, my idea is that I, I don't have anything in mind. I'm just putting down pieces, right? And then I might find something at the end, you know, I would cut this out and maybe place it there and my piece would be done. And then, and then I would do some small embellishing around. So that's one way of doing a collage. Let me see if I can make my camera no, never mind. I'm not going to touch it. I was going to say if I can zoom in a little bit. But no, no fussing. <laughs> okay, so that is one option. But I am going to do a different, different thing. So here's my substrate. Now say that you have something that you want to choose as the focal point right this is a second approach of how i start collages is that i choose something and that is going to be the the focus of the entire collage so let me cut out this bird Okay, that's what I'm going to choose as my main focus. And everything else that I choose is going to be kind of like the helper. Everything else is going to add to this. So I'm keeping that in mind when I'm looking for pieces. And already I can see one sitting right here that will work. I like this piece because it has oranges, this orange here, and also this little bit of kind of purple and pink. It just goes with these colors over here. So this piece I definitely want to use. I definitely want to use, right? So anytime I'm adding pick pieces onto this collage, I am, I am looking for pieces that will complement Okay, so let's keep going. Looking for some background pieces. Um, I can do some text possibly. Now I found this this is something that I rubber stamped, right? And I'm not going to use it in this collage, but I wanted to bring it to your attention because you can stamp things on random pieces of paper and then add them into your collage. And if this is not the right color, then you grab your inks, your different color inks, and you choose you make a new background with that ink and I will show you show you an example I have these trivets I bought from the 99 cent store and they have these patterns on them and let me show you how cool it is when you just take colored ink and a piece of paper 
And I've got a notebook here. Let's say I have this green bird and I want a green background. So here I can even I can even experiment with a couple of different colors. Let's take let's take three. Move this out of the way. Now let's see how this works. You see that? So now I could tear this out and use it in the back of one of my collages. Now I'd have to see if I could match the color. Let's see which one would go best. Yeah, definitely not that one. This one or the, even this lime. Let's try this lime. You know what? Maybe I will use it. We'll see. So I'm going to take it. So possibly I'm going to keep this on the side and I possibly will use that. Okay. So I'm still going to keep going here. I've got my pieces. Um, what else do I have? Now, I'm working on a postcard because it is the theme, the, the project that we're doing in the membership. And the membership has a new project every single month. Sometimes it's gonna be ATCs, sometimes it's gonna be zines, um, postcard art, ATCs times four, when we did the, you know, the, the big card with the four ATCs on it. There'll be a new project each month, and in addition to the type of project, there will be a theme to it. And this theme for October is uh, life in the countryside, pastoral living. So I am looking for images that kind of represent life in the countryside. What else? And I know I do have a few more a few more pictures here, a few more images that I wanted to pull out. These are really nice. This one's really nice too. Okay. So I already I already have a lot of things. I think I have enough stuff here to to pretty much you know, complete my collage. Um, it's just a matter of getting getting the layering in the in the way that I want it. Okay. So which which image do I like better? I think I like this dark one. It has a lot of these dark branches. So let me play with this one. And it's really interesting if I can get it that this bird is looking overlooking this um, scene. And then do I want to do something with this? I'm not sure. This might be still too big. No, maybe not. It doesn't seem to go, and that's okay. Okay, 
I think I'm gonna stick with this. I think I'm gonna stick with this. Right. So now, let's get my glue stick. So up until now, I haven't glued anything down, which is good because now I can play with the placement um, and see what I'm happy with, right? This is a very narrow piece and this is kind of a narrow piece, so they will have to perfectly line up next to each other and there's gonna be some space around the outside, but that's okay because I can fill it with other things, with rubber stamping, for example. Layers, which one do I want? Do I want this on the bottom and then this on the top? No, I like this better. And then maybe this one on top of like this, right? And then maybe this here. Yeah, I like that. Okay, so let me start with that. Let me, I can pull this up a little bit. Right, okay. So for super thin paper, I like to use uh, double or glue. I like to use glue stick. And I'm gonna pull this up. Okay, then comes this piece here. So my background basically consists of three pieces. Now let me trim this off so that I can see exactly where the edge of the postcard is. Now the last piece is going to go here like this. Okay, cut off the top. All right, this looks good already. I'm already liking this background. This is really nice. Um, Here is going to be my focal image, like this. And here's going to be my bird What else do I want to do? What else do I want to add? I would like to add a little bit more color, a little more green. Well, actually there's green on this tree trunk. 
but maybe the orange. I would like to have more things that stand out with orange. So let me grab some postage stamps. Here's an orange one here. I could do something like this. Um, I could also put it down here. I tend to like to have stamps up at the top. This is a very big stamp though. It's kind of almost too big. I wonder if I have something smaller. I have a green stamp that would look good possibly. This one is also has a little bit of orange to it. So now I'm just playing around with layers, right? And tiny little embellishments. And now's also the time I can think about some rubber stamping. Eventually, I would like to do some kind of rubber stamping probably along along this space right here because there's, there's a big gap. So even before I glue anything down, maybe I want to rubber stamp. Let me see if I have something that would fit there. Something like this I could put, or this one. This might I might use for later. Let's see. Okay, I'll, I'll maybe I'll use that one. But what color should I do? Orange. What else is there on this bird? Maybe a light brown. I have some kind of sand color that might work. Or a dark brown. I have these. Maybe this, potter's clay. I don't think I want red. Red might be too much. Let's try this one. So someone asked, are you going to keep that bright white photo corner? You know what? I didn't even think about that. Let me look. This is a very nice color, by the way. I like this. This really works. It's hard to see. And I don't know. Yeah, it does focus for me. Um, so let me let me use this color and then I will think about this. Hold on one second. Let me get this in here. Okay, good. Um, will I keep this border? I was I was thinking that I would. I think so. I think I'll keep it. Is it too much? <laughs> now you've got me doubting myself. Um, no, that's good. That's good to think of all these things. I could trim it just a little bit. It's it is uneven. This is short and this is a little bit longer. Um, well, I think I'm going to leave it. I'm going to leave it, going to leave it just like that. Okay. Katie says, I vote to keep the border. <laughs> Okay, so here this is going to go like this. Do I want to move it down a little bit? Possibly, yeah. I like the idea of moving that down. Then I can have more space for these guys. I can layer them if I want to. 
this and this. Kind of like it the way I had it before. Maybe like this. There we go. Okay. Anything else? Do I want to add anything else? I could possibly do something down here. Or do I want to put this here? Okay, I could put this down and then maybe also rubber stamp on top of it. Yeah, maybe I'll do that. That's that's a good idea. I have some numbers I could possibly put down. Let's see what happens if I stick this in here. I think that might be too much. Yeah, that's too much. Okay. Anything else in my little pile of papers that I could pull out? I'm thinking I'm just going to stick with that, but you know what? It's kind of floating. And maybe you've heard me use these terms before with floating. I don't like stuff that just sits all by itself. It needs to be anchored with something. And so I always try and, you know, put a couple of things together. Um... Does that make sense to do that? Mm, what else do I have? But what I can do is I can put this by itself and then anchor it with a rubber stamping over it. So I think that's my option, what I will do here. Because I'm looking through my papers really quickly and nothing is really jumping out at me. So I'm gonna leave this by itself like this and I will do some rubber stamping on top of it. So let me get this glued down. I will also get these two glued down up here. This has still got a hinge on here that I need to pull off. There we go. Okay. There we go. Now, down here, let me get another rubber stamp. this one and I do want this in black because I want it to show pretty well This one I got from the Michaels Craft Store, and I think it's one of my most used stamps ever. Love this stamp. This is Inkadoo? Yeah, Inka, Inka Dinkadoo. Okay, so I'm gonna move this over, and I'm gonna put this first. There. 
I could have waited and, and stamped it with this, but the problem is, is this is pretty thick and it would have ruined, or I would not have gotten the coverage all the way at the bottom. So I decided to put that one first. Now for this, this is, as I said, pretty thick. I'm not gonna use glue stick on this. I'm gonna use double-sided tape. Okay. Um, where's the larger stamp that is circular that you sometimes use um, for backgrounds? I don't have it here in this new tiny space where I am. I have it um, in still in my laundry room. I know which one you're talking about. It's made by Club Scrap. That's the name of the, the company. Um, and I bought it used on eBay. So I couldn't give you a location of where to buy it. That's where I got it. I do like to get rubber stamps off of eBay, but it's really, really hit or miss. Sometimes I find something, but it's kind of rare. And I'm, I'm, I don't want a lot of rubber stamps. I don't use a lot of rubber stamps. I tend to use the same ones over and over and over again. So I'm picky about what I get. But if you look up geometric rubber stamp um, wood mount rubber stamp geometric those are those are the words i use when i'm looking for um, rubber stamps online okay here we go so i'm going to put this down this is um i wish i would have moved it up a little bit but that's okay i can always still add more stuff my bird is going to go here um, I do have this big spot over here. What could I put over there? <laughs> this I might do with this. Well, let me get this bird down. Oops. Okay. There we go. There's that. I could do another rubber stamping. I don't know. I'm still not convinced of what, I'm not clear of what I should put in that corner. So I'm going to leave it for now. So I'm going to say that this is done and I like to finish with something and move on to something else. And then if I come back and look at it in a couple of hours or maybe, maybe tomorrow, I might have some new ideas of what I want to put in that corner. And that's totally fine. You don't need to have all the answers on the first day. Sometimes you need a little space to just let it breathe and you know let it kind of soak in and then you come back and you add things so i can fix these little areas that need extra glue do always you know pick at your stuff and see what's loose and what needs to be adjusted and all that because if you mail this just as is and it has 
little pieces of paper that flip up, they will get caught in the machinery and get torn off. So you wanna make sure all of your pieces are really anchored down. And that also goes for you know bending. Bend it just a little bit and see if anything pops up, see if any of these corners come up, right? Looks good. Everything's pretty well fixed on there. Okay. Now, what about the back? Say that you are gonna mail a postcard like this. What do you do with the back? Right? What about the back side, says Kathy. Yep. Some people have those rubber stamps that say postcard, so you could do something like that. This is really brown, and if I write on here with a pencil or a pen, it's not gonna really show very well. So you could collage on this side as well. Let me see if I have an example. Sometimes you can take an old envelope or an old postcard. Let me see what else. I have. This is too big. I don't want to use that. Let's see if I have any old postcards. Um, see, it's this front, not so interesting. I don't think I would use this in a collage, but I could use this. So in that case, I would just go ahead and because it's a little thicker, I will use double sided tape along here and just place it on here. And then this is what I will use as my background, right? Another idea. Well, I would have to hunt through all my pieces of paper to find exactly what I want to do. But another idea is if you take something with lines on it, say something like this, tear it, just put it on one side, put something on the other side. Oh, you know what? Look, I could use this. Okay, so I think I'm gonna stick with this. I will show you one more option. Is to just cover it with any kind of, you know, white paper. Anything, just cover it across if you want a different color paper. And then you take a little bit of washi tape as a dividing line like this. There, now here's the spot for putting someone's address. Here's the area for writing something and you're all set, right? Your postage stamp and you're good. But this I am gonna use, I do like this. So here I will just put use double-sided tape on this. Now for this, double-sided double -sided tape is awesome because you can leave some of it on, take some of it off, and then the spot where it's on, you can, you can find the right placement where you want, line it up perfectly, press it down, and now you have it, half of it stuck. And then you just remove the other pieces. 
so useful for putting down your pieces just right with double-sided tape. Okay. Okay, so now I'm ready for my postcard address and sending out. And it's even nice because it's got this little frame around it, which is awesome. All right, any other questions? Um, you could make a copy of a vintage postcard and avoid the extra thickness. You're right, this is pretty thick already. This is getting pretty thick. Um, it's got some heft to it, that's for sure. Okay. Um, what about cutting out the face on the lighter green stamp on the upper right? Oh, this one. Well, you know what? That's right. This is this is the right color. It goes nicely with the bird there. It's an interesting idea of using that. You could use it. Okay, I'm going to think about that. That's a good idea. Down here even, possibly. Okay. And... All right, so that is that. This is my one postcard. Let me talk a little bit about the membership, but so you can go back and see me. Um, this is one postcard, and in addition to, so in the membership, there are a bunch of things that you get. You get an eight page, um, digital magazine and i can show you what that looks like page that looks like this um, digital magazine you may have a copy and of it already show you what that looks um, like. inside it has page things that you like can cut this. out um, and digital magazine you may have a copy of it already um, inside you cut out it has use you some of your own papers and, and, and then create a new a copy of it already um, inside it has use some of your own papers and, 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 and then create a new copy of it already the last one inside some of your own papers and then create a new to that magazine there is the ability to exchange art every single month before it used to be every quarter we would do art exchanges now I am opening it that it is every single month and I know not everybody likes to exchange art I know that um, so that's not for everybody but I really hope that someday when you are comfortable um, with your art that you would consider exchanging with others because I really think there is some magic that happens when you put your stuff out there and somebody else gets your your work and then you get to collect other people's works and then you have a collection of postcards of a bunch of different artists that 
that you have communicated with, right? And send stuff through the mail. And that's that's just so, so cool. And it's just encouraging and rewarding to have it. So that's why it's important to me to make these opportunities available to you all to exchange art. Um, so in the membership, we are doing them every single month. And with the sign up, so what happens is that the beginning of the month, the new magazine goes out. It has the projects in it and the theme. And so then you know what those things are. We will do a meetup, something like this, once a month. And that will be in the second week of the month, say around the 8th or the 9th of that month. We can, you know, brainstorm and then work on some stuff together so that you kind of get the idea of what we're working on. And then from the second week through the third week, so for two whole weeks, that window is open for signing up to exchange art if you want to. And then by the last week in the month, that's pretty much when you need to get your stuff out. That's like, I want people to get into the habit of, you know, finding this rhythm of, okay, we have the project at the beginning of the month, we start to talk about it, brainstorm, work on them, and then the window is open for week two and week three, but then by week four, yep, start, we gotta start getting stuff out. I know not everybody works fast or you don't have a lot of time, so that's why all these things are optional. You don't need to exchange art if you don't want to. If you wanna just create stuff for yourself, perfectly fine, right? And you don't even need to participate in the in the live meets. That's also something that's just voluntary. Um, there's also a really awesome community on the Mighty Networks uh, where I have this all living. It's, it's being hosted on, on the Mighty Networks. And there you can ask questions, you can post photos of your work, you can see what other people are doing. Um, it's, it's, everybody's so, so kind and encouraging there. So it's, it's a really nice place to, to post and, you know, be in, be encouraged about what you're doing with collage. So that is, that's that. The membership is $12 a month and it's, there is no like yearly sign up or anything. You join when you want to join. And if you want to, if you want to, to finish, you know, no pressure, that's fine as well. Um, but I hope you'll, you'll do it and you'll stick with it because guaranteed you are going to be creating art. You're going to be creating art. Um, and it's, it's just going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. So, um, let me know if you have any questions. Let me look really quick. Um, Dorothy, yes, Dorothy has already signed up and she's got some people that she's exchanging. Um, when will exchange partner names be sent? So what happens is I have it all automated now. And there is a form that you fill out with your name and your address. And it even asks you your preference for where you want to exchange art. Is it internationally, you don't care, or would you prefer just to have it within your region so that the postage is not so expensive, right? So you fill out your form and it goes into this system and it automatically picks another person and sends you through email their name and their address. So it's all automated, it's all automated. You can sign up up to four times per month that's that's the rule now it's four times for a postcard when we do zines and if we do other kinds of art it might change i know zines are super popular and people love to do them and once you complete a zine you can copy it and you know exchange it uh, lots of times so i'm i will increase the number of signups for zines um up to a certain number. I don't know what it what it is yet. But anyway, um, so yes, that's how you get partners on the exchange. Um, what do we do with the take threes? There's a hashtag on there, take three. You can share on Instagram if you would like or any other kind of social media. 
at the moment there in in the mighty networks there is um the circle that the members are in called the membership so you can post them in the feed there just also use a hashtag um, anywhere inside the body of the text of the of the post you know write take three so that anybody can look it up just by doing a search for take three i don't have them by specific month um so just it just is take three right anything else good 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 okay now for mailing do you mail it just like this that's one option the second option is to go ahead and put it in an envelope and mail it off you know with a cover if you just feel like you want your work to be protected um, you worry about something happening to it that's also an option as well i really love to get postcards like this directly in the mail because then it comes with all the marks on it and you can see that it's gone through the postal system right so that's that's my personal preference but it might be different for you what about varnish or some kind of coat over the top um again that is up to you i really like being able to touch the actual paper i want the texture of what this stamp really felt like for example so i'm not going to cover this at all could it get damaged or faded yeah i suppose it could but that's kind of the trade-off um i just want it to be in its its current state like this so again there's no right or wrong personal preference do what you would like to do okay any other questions any other questions um mary says i signed up four names um for the october postcards a few days ago i will say that sometimes you don't get your partner like immediately because it takes there might not be enough people in the queue to be able to assign you someone else and also if you sign up all four in a row you might get the same person twice um so you might want to think about waiting a little bit do two on one day and then two on another day for example maybe that will help a little bit with that kind of mixing up a little bit of names okay um will you be my swap partner with your postcard <laughs> could be kathy could be i have not signed up yet i will i will definitely sign up i will make three more of these and send them out um i will say that i am also working on sending out some mail art to pretty much everybody who has signed up on the membership one of the things that i really want to do is um share more of my art and i love printing i love printing stuff and making copies of things and having things like postcards that i create so i have a stack a big stack of, of postcards that I am going to be mailing out to members of this group. I will do it from time to time. I'm going to do it when people join and maybe for the holidays or, you know, a couple of other times a year, I will send things out. So at some point, Kathy, hopefully I will be sending you something as well. Okay. So um how many people have signed up for the membership so far i have about 146 people so there's quite a group of people and the people who have signed up already for the postcard art it's a lot there's at least 40 people who have signed up to exchange art so this is awesome i love this i love this part and seeing what people create and that they're excited about exchanging and i understand it can be really nerve-wracking and you you put yourself out there you're like oh my gosh you know is my is my art good enough 
you know, I'm just a beginner, you know, you have all these doubts. I get it. I get it. Um, but it's, it's something that comes with a little bit of practice and that feeling of confidence will come once you start. Once the first time you send something out and you receive something back, you're just going to love it. You're going to love that. And it will encourage you to create even more, which is awesome. Um, but, you know, take your time. No rush. You don't need to exchange art if you don't want to. Only if it makes you feel good and if you, if you would like to do so. Okay. All right. So... Thank you so much, everybody, for being here, for being patient with me while I go through this whole awful process of getting this tech working, screaming at the beginning, and um, just just upload the good bits uh, to YouTube a little bit later today. So thanks so much for your time. Thanks for being here. And I think that's about it. I will see you later. <laughs>